Hi, welcome to this third part of this video series. Uh, in this part, I would like to take you through DAG University, through DAGcoin, what makes DAGcoin different from many other cryptocurrencies out there. Um, I'd like to share some knowledge with you because, um, as you may know, when knowledge increases, you are able to take better decisions on many matters. And many things are happening in the financial world. Um, cryptocurrencies is one of them. And as you gain more knowledge, you may be able to take advantage of that change, actually. Make it work for you. Many people are not that very happy when large changes occur. Me, myself, uh, maybe for yourself. And many other people, uh, change is something that uh, usually we don't really like. But if you know what these changes might bring, you are able to make better decisions and take advantage of them. That is actually the basis for DAG University, because uh, as you look at the financial system, that hasn't really changed over the decades. And also the current educational system still uh, educates us to become an employee. And of course, that's great. I mean, if you have a nice job and you're able to work somewhere for many years, but the utopian vision that you are able to work at a company for 40 years, for 40 hours a week, and then hopefully get a pension that provides you with about 40% of the buying power that you were used to, is not that very actual anymore. Uh, it's not what we see, and it may not be what we should actually want. We have other options. We have to become, and you see that with many people, more of an entrepreneur of our own lives, uh, make decisions on rapidly um, well facing changes that 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 come uh, that come uh, our way that come our way so to change this educational system DAG University was uh, thought up DAG University is part of the DAG coin limited company and what DAG University actually wants to provide is a better better educational system uh, all around the world. I mean, I hope you agree with me that in the elite schools, um, that maybe in the Western world we are able to go to, we have more of an advantage of creating success in our lives than, however wonderful it is, the people on the left-hand corner, um, they just have different chances. And that also goes for where you are brought up. I mean, if you are born in the left top corner, uh, left top, right? Yes. In the left top corner, uh, then your chances for creating a successful life are less likely than if you're just born in a different location. Now, what do rich people know that other people don't? And let's face it, I mean, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Uh, rich people know how to make money work for them. 5% of the world's population actually owns 95% of the wealth, which means that 95% of the people have to do with 5% of the remainder. Now, that is not a very good situation. I just imagine living on the left-hand side, and because this is actually a, 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 an aerial photograph of a favela in Sao Paulo, where rich and poor live this closely together. Now, what do rich people know? They usually know a bit more about how to work with money um, and there is no real education about money it's not a subject in our educational system and it is very important because money is actually what makes the world tick and what makes many of us be able to uh, avoid problems and to realize our dreams now what is money where does it come from how does it come into existence if changes occur then how can you benefit from seeing these changes and and investing in them instead of being afraid of them or missing them and regretting the fact that you missed them afterwards. So I'd like to go over some information about our current money system and then on to cryptocurrencies. Because if you look at the history of money, I mean, it was a very fair deal. We used to just trade. I mean, you would have a chicken, I would have some fish, and we would just make a deal that I would get some of your chicken, you would get some of my fish, and a transaction was made. Now, that wasn't very practical, so people started using uh, valuable uh, coins, gold, silver, as a means of payment. 
Now then the banks, which were very clever, said, you know, we'll keep that gold for you in our vaults, we'll keep it safe, and we'll give you a little note that says, you know, if you want to convert this back into the gold that we're keeping for you, you may, uh, but it's a very more, it's a, it's a much more practical system to be able to use these types of notes. And of course it is. So the banks kept the money for us and we dealt with notes. Now, then we've seen that, you know, many changes in the forms of payments have occurred. Of course, the internet uh, has given us the possibility to, to uh, make digital payments, to have cashless payment systems, etc. Um, but it still is the same type of money. It is a type of money that is owned by governments, that is brought into circulation by central banks. And in 2008, 2009, a person or a group of persons invented a system where you and I could just exchange a digital uh, type of money and a system would verify that transaction. There would be no need for a third party bringing trust into the equation. Uh, that person, Satoshi Nakamoto, was the inventor of a cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. And that's actually the first crypto cryptocurrency that was ever launched. Now, everybody, as of that moment, can actually create their own digital money. And the technology that supports those types of payment systems or any type of transaction where uh, value is exchanged uh, can be based on blockchain. Blockchain is the name that this technology was given. And blockchain will change many industries over the next coming years because it actually takes out some of the work of the middleman, the middleman that we would need to base trust on. You know, in the old days, you would just go to a store, buy something, and if the product didn't uh, suit you, you would just go back, tell the person that you didn't like it. Uh, there may have been a breach of trust or you trusted the person anyway uh, in giving that person uh, the turnover. Um, but as our global economy is increasing, we need other systems that we can base our trust on. Now, blockchain does just that. So uh, a cryptocurrency has been a real game changer in the financial world, uh, and it will definitely define how we conduct our payments in the years to come. Um, and then as to the gold that these banks were keeping for us, um, up until, well, some decades ago, they used to still back up the money supply, and that has changed. Um, President Richard Nixon, in 1971, first declared the convertibility of gold into the dollar and vice versa, uh, temporarily suspended, and then it became a permanent thing. Now, what that has done, I mean, if you and I just uh, uh, turn on the printer and print some money, uh, uh, we're likely to be put in jail uh, at short notice. Um, but what many countries have done since they left the backing of gold, actually the dollar was not convertible into gold anymore, is that they have um, given way sort of to, to a, 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 yeah, a sense of just printing money, actually, when they need it. And it is good if a government prints some more money to stimulate the economy, to make money a bit cheaper. And if, a, if an economy heats up too much, that they actually retract some of the money supply, actually making money more expensive to cool off an economy. But the increase that you just see there over the last uh, decades, where the money supply, for instance, through some quantitative easing programs in the United States, has grown six times over, um, well, would have been something that you and I would have been caught for and put into jail. But then if many countries do the same and agree upon, you know, printing this much money, you know, like you see uh, uh, China doing and Russia and South Africa, they have all used the printing press to create more money. Oh, I'm here in the light, to create more money. Actually, what's it, what this does, and I just read an article about Venezuela, where a government just doesn't keep control of this type of, uh, of phenomenon, huge inflation. 8,900% of inflation in the last 12 years, and 5,000 people a day are fleeing the country of Venezuela. They want to go elsewhere. That country has just gone bankrupt. They have printed themselves into oblivion. Now, in the Eurozone and the dollar zone, we're still, 
You know, we're seeing inflation, not that percentages of inflation, but still, I mean, it is a scary situation that there is just too much money to go around, which actually creates some of the bubbles that we've seen over the last decades as well in housing, in stock, and currently in cryptocurrency actually as well. Um, let's see, what we deserve as a people is a more transparent payment system. I mean, we're actually at the mercy of governments and central banks in the world to uh, define our future. Now, Mr. Sakamoto or his team, they have come up with a system that is more transparent, that is of the people, and that is actually keeping value. Now, what are the characteristics that such a payment system uh, should have? They should have a fixed amount. I mean, uh, a Bitcoin was invented and um, it was decided at the birth of Bitcoin that the system would only produce 21 million Bitcoins. There is still like 4 million remaining that will come into life over the next 100 and something years. Now, if a quantity of something is limited and the demand grows, then of course the value grows. So this is a payment system where the money that we actually use would gain in value. Now, of course, it has to support fast transactions, which over the internet is a great possibility. It needs to have low transaction fees. Well, if you can send an email uh, over the internet, which doesn't cost you anything, um, why should a currency transfer cost you more than that, actually? Uh, now, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, they are an anonymous system. Governments and, and tax departments cannot look into how much people actually have. And they're trying to, of course, uh, get these types of currencies regulated. We deserve a certain type of, uh, of uh, um, privacy. And, I mean, know your customer procedures um, are good to make a cryptocurrency system to sort of mingle with the current system that we know. Um, it needs to be accessible for everyone. Now, um, if you have internet access, you can do cryptocurrency payments. Um, with your smartphone, on a laptop, wherever. So it is actually accessible to everybody that has an internet connection. Uh, and please know that about 2 billion people in the world do not have any access to a bank account. So they're actually kept out of the digital world. Uh, they live still in a cash society. Um, and this type of system creates a possibility for everybody to partake in um, the economy. And makes them globally connected even. So this is what a good system should look like. Now, Bitcoin was the first, and we have seen the rise of many, many, many cryptocurrencies because of several different reasons. Sometimes it's just for investment money, uh, getting investment money into a company, um, and they all want to change some of the rules and regulations that they encounter in their particular branch of business. Um, they're all based on blockchain as a technology and most of them haven't really succeeded. You might say they have even failed in becoming that international payment system. Now, why is that? That is because, uh, first of all, the transaction speeds. If a system is to be considered by the people as a good alternative, it should be better, right? Um, if we look at transaction speeds, the Bitcoin network is able to handle seven transactions per second. Now, if about 600 McDonald's uh, restaurants do all of their transactions in the Bitcoin system, then the Bitcoin system is already full. full. So how can it become a worldwide payment system, really? Of course, many people are working on that to improve, but still. Ethereum... Um, is like second rank in the coin market cap as a currency ether. But on the Ethereum platform, many, many, many other cryptocurrencies were built. It is sort of like a basis for many cryptocurrencies and, and tokens to, uh, to get a life. Now, that particular platform is able to handle 25 transactions per second. Um, you know, recent blockchains are able to... Uh, um, have about three to 4,000 transactions per second handled. But then if you look at our current system, I mean, these systems need to be better. And if you just look at Visa, Visa has a capability of doing 56,000 transactions per second. 
Now, they don't even use that, like on a Black Friday or a, a, a Christmas day, they may get up to 13, 14,000 transactions per second. Um, but still, I mean, there's a lot of reserve capacity within that system that blockchain systems just do not attack, really. So transaction speeds are a hindrance to cryptocurrency becoming more mainstream as a payment system. Um, but what has happened is that, you know, from being an everyday currency, all these cryptocurrencies have sort of been hijacked by uh, traders, by people investing into them, trying to make a quick buck. Um, so it's become sort of like an, uh, an asset class where people win and lose money. Now, that's not really what I think Bitcoin was invented for. And what you see is that when, whoa, back into the light, when you see what happens is that there's a, a, a large volatility of the value of those cryptocurrencies from day to day, uh, which is nice. I mean, you could make some money and you can lose some money, but it is not a currency that will be accepted by, um, by merchants. Because, I mean, you may sell a product um, and get cryptocurrency in exchange. And of course, I mean, if you sell that cryptocurrency and it is doubled in value, then you're very happy. But if that currency uh, decreases in value the next day and you need to exchange the cryptocurrency for a euro or dollar, you're losing out on money. So merchants are not going to be able to take that risk and cryptocurrency will not become a mainstream payment system. So volatility, volatility should be avoided at all cost. Now, what should we look at really? I mean, we need to focus on the right values when constructing a cryptocurrency that will work as a payment system. It needs users, yeah, it needs users, users. It's need, it needs many users actually. I mean, many people around the world need to have that particular cryptocurrency that they want to pay with. Then there's a need for merchants accepting a cryptocurrency for their products and services. Uh, we need to create usage. Now the technology needs to support that. And I've just shown that transaction speeds actually in the blockchain based cryptocurrencies, you know, that's not really a technology that supports, supports a worldwide payment system. Now we also need to look at environmental, environmental effects. Uh, if you've seen some of the YouTube videos uh, showing how the Bitcoin system works and how Bitcoin mining actually works, you see these incredible farms of computers just lined up in rows to be able to uh, um, um, support that administrative cryptocurrency blockchain system. Now, one day of cryptocurrency mining uh, costs as much, as much electricity as the country of Ireland uses also during a day. That is not an environmentally sustainable business. I mean, we do not want those types of energy consumptions uh, um, to be needed just to keep a payment system or a system afloat, right? And of course we need trust. I mean, uh, as the first people walked around with a credit card, nobody was willing to accept them and now it's become mainstream. Uh, we still uh, feel that the 50 euros or the, or the, or the $10 uh, uh, bill, bills that we get, uh, we're willing to accept because we know that the next day uh, we'll be able to buy more or less the same with that bill as the day before. So a cryptocurrency needs to get and gain the trust of the people. Now, which cryptocurrency has all of these characteristics? That is DAC coin. And why DAC coin? Well, look at these uh, uh, transaction speeds, the scalability of transactions. We've seen these numbers. DAC coin is able to do an unlimited amount of transactions per second because of the fact that it is based on a totally new technology, a technology called DAG chain, directed acyclic graph. Um, you may forget that again, but um, um, it is a totally new system, different from blockchain in the verification of transactions. Um, scalability is, is, is a thing and also transaction fees. If you pay your cup of coffee with a Visa credit card, the restaurant that accepts that particular credit card uh, needs to pay 14 and a half euro cents to the credit card company. Now that's okay. Um, if you pay your cup of coffee with a Bitcoin transaction, 
And we've seen quite a different uh, array of prices for transactions over the last uh, weeks and months um, when the Bitcoin system was quite clogged. Transaction fees would go up, rise to about 20, 30 to 40 euros because the miners needed to be paid to uh, give way to your transactions to be verified first. Because otherwise you would have to wait for days to have your transaction verified. Now that is not something that is feasible in normal payments. Now if you look at the transaction cost of DAG coin payments, it is one twentieth of a euro cent. Now in the Western world again, I mean, a small transaction fee may not be such a problem. But just imagine you're living in India, Venezuela, in Brazil, in many other countries around the world where you may buy a bowl of rice for 10 cents. Now, for these types of micropayments, high transaction fees will not make that system fly. And if it just costs you 1 20th of a euro cent to make that payment in DAG coins, it will be able to be a worldwide accepted payment system as it is. Now, why is that? Uh, actually, because DAGCoin is just based on a totally new technology called DAGChain, as I said. And as it says here, there are no blocks. For instance, in the Bitcoin system, every 10 minutes, a block appears in the system and it is filled with transactions. If it is full, then another transaction needs to wait for the next block to come into the system within 10 minutes time. Now, in a DAG environment, DAG chain environment, every transaction is there to verify an incoming other transaction. So as more transactions enter into the system, it just becomes faster. Now, there are no miners. The coins are already predefined, they're already there. So they don't come into existence because of the process of mining they are already existent and they are just, you know, through transactions spread throughout the world. Every new transaction helps to confirm the previous one and it is an expendable chain. Um, so this is really a fast system that makes for many, many, many transactions being able to be performed worldwide at the same time. Um, where does that coin come from? It comes from Estonia. It was developed in Estonia, which is one of the, uh, uh, the most digitally advanced countries in Europe. Now, at DagCoin Limited, uh, 70 people are employed in two offices. The head office is in Tallinn. There's another office in Tartu. And it will be and it is the most easy to use cryptocurrency in the world. Uh, it was launched in late 2016. In 2017, all these technicians uh, did a great job on expanding uh, all of the features, creating an ecosystem that I will talk about later. And they know that in this technology, uh, technology area, you really need to be constantly focusing on continuous development. There will be only 1 billion coins, as you see. So again here, uh, the same with any other cryptocurrency, the amount is fixed and limited. Uh, so as demand grows, and offer remains stable, um, you may assume that the price will rise. Now, about Estonia, as I said, one of the most digitally advanced countries as of their independence in 1991 from the Russian government, they decided to really focus on digital development. So Wi-Fi has become a constitutional right as of the year 2000, um, and many startups uh, are very successful. Skype actually was born in uh, Estonia, uh, by a couple of uh, Estonian uh, guys and uh, well some time ago it was sold to Microsoft for an incredible amount of money so it is the Silicon Valley of Europe that's where DAC coin comes from um, and building an ecosystem is very important I mean as a user as a user you need to have the merchants that accept DAC coin to make this payment system work so now what is all included in this DAC coin um, ecosystem, uh, you can download a DAG wallet onto your smart device. You know, I have an Android phone and I have a DAG wallet on my phone, as I've shown you in uh, video number two. There's a web wallet that you can uh, install on your laptop or your computer. There's a merchant finder platform where you, as a customer, may look up who in your city or in your region is accepting DAG coin as a payment. Now, that makes for, of course, marketing for those merchants. 
because they will attract customers that have DAGCoin to spend. DAGPay is a technical application, an API, uh, where you can integrate DAG payments within, for instance, your web shop. Now that's good. Uh, you have ideal payment, credit card payment, uh, etc. Um, look where my hand goes. Um, and you can integrate accepting DAGCoin payments within your system. Now, that's great. Then there's two exchanges. There is an open exchange, PayGetty, um, where you can buy and where you can just register and you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies. DAGCoin is one of them. It is a way to provide social proof, actually, that we have a coin that is uh, also available uh, through an open exchange. And we have our own exchange, which is called Swipex where members that have accounts within the uh, uh, DAG coin system can also exchange uh, DAG coins for money and money into DAG coin. Now that's the ecosystem. Quite important to have an ecosystem to make a payment system functional. So, you know, how is DAG coin different from all other cryptocurrencies? It is easy to use. I mean, you just download your DAG wallet, you create an account, it is very easy and there is a support system supporting this. I mean, you cannot call Bitcoin Limited if you have a problem, but you can call DAGCoin to have them help you with any questions that you might have, may have. So it's easy to use. There's a large uh, um, security involved. DAG chain is even more secure than blockchain is. You know, the 51% majority in blockchain systems to be able to uh, reverse payments, etc., is not such of a high risk within blockchain systems. But still, it is a risk. And as transactions verify transactions, I mean, there's uh, no way to be able to, to hack uh, um, the, the DAG chain data. So it's very secure. It has um, low transaction fees, as I said. Um, the coins are predefined, so it's actually a, a eco-friendly system where mining does not take up all of that energy. Um, eco-friendly, and it provides for fast transactions. Now, that's what it is. Now, something quite important. In the cryptocurrency area, many, many governments, many tax departments are looking for ways to regulate this new asset class, this new form of exchanging value and storing value. Now, the government of Estonia, a country in the European Union, has given licenses, uh, permits to both Swipex Limited as well as DAGCoin Limited, to exchange cryptocurrencies for fiat currency, euros, dollars, etc., and vice versa. So the government of Estonia has given DAGCoin uh, permission to this. These are the numbers of the licenses that you see here. Um, and through two other licenses, both Swipex and DAGCoin are able to provide people with DAG wallets. So now that's quite something. I mean, if you remember anything of this particular presentation, it may just be this, that a government is supporting uh, all types of digital development within their country. And as a European country, it then goes for, uh, well, actually all of this, other countries included. Now, how can you find out about this? I just talked about being the entrepreneur of your life having the skills as an entrepreneur to get information, to see what it may mean for you as a person and to take the right decision based on information. Now, DAG University wants to provide just that. They want to provide a system where you can get education on becoming an entrepreneur, on sales, on public speaking, on mentorship, on building your team, because that is great for building the network of DAG coin users. And it is, of course, great for you as a person to learn those types of skills. It also provides, DAG University also provides all types of information on financial matters. Um, financial matters, including Forex, including, you know, how do currencies work? How do you invest your money? And what are cryptocurrencies and how will they change our future? So that is the way people get informed. So they will be able to uh, take better decisions in their life. So it's the aim of DAG University to educate people all around the world and to show just that 1% uh, of the total turnover of DAG coin is donated to charities, charities uh, related to education. And DAG University will also provide the world with own branches of DAG University uh, offices in the world in the years to come. 
Now then, how do people find out? That's because we have chosen multi-level marketing, network marketing, mouth-to-mouth -mouth advertisement, affiliate marketing, you know, whatever you may name it, as a way to get this into the world. Now, what is multi-level marketing as a form of sales? Many companies use network marketing to promote their goods or services. And just to give you a few numbers, 20 billion in yearly turnover is actually created by people uh, in network marketing. There's 150 million people worldwide that, um, you know, next to their job, part-time, have a multi-level marketing uh, a product or service that they sell and promote to other people. 150 million people gaining around 150 to $200 uh, on average per month. Some people make more, they work harder, they work smarter, they create great teams, have a lot of turnover, so they make uh, uh, they usually make a lot more. And there's people that just have an extra income um, to be able to pay for their dreams and their goals that they're not able to finance from their job alone. And the basis is that people trust people, not advertisements that much anymore. So if you just tell somebody, you know, I've been to this restaurant, I've seen this movie, it was great, you should go as well. That is mouth-to-mouth -mouth advertisement. And Dagcoin also, in this case, is willing to pay uh, people that are active, that are able to create a following, that are able to create more members, making use of Dagcoin and to get merchants into uh, accepting Dagcoins. Um, so if you are able to... Uh, well, to, 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 to promote this in the right way, uh, then the company will compensate you for that um, fairly, fairly. So that's why we have chosen multi-level marketing as a way to get as many people as we can, as soon as we can, on a worldwide scale into this great DACOIN, DAC University project. Now, how can you become part of Success Factory? I will go into more detail in a next video that I will be taping as to the networking opportunities. But just to become part of the, uh, uh, the Success Factory network, you can buy educational courses. They will provide you, as I said, with entrepreneurial skills. They will provide you with more information about uh, everything that's happening in the financial world, cryptocurrencies included. You buy a package. For 100 euros, you get 100 DAG coins, 500, 500, 1,000, 1,000. If you're able to invest some more, um, the packages of 2,500 euro and 5,000 euro give you 20% additional coins. So you will get 3,000 and 6,000 coins and 40% uh, more coins with a package are provided to you when you're able to invest 12,500 or 25,000 euro. Now you'll get more and more uh, access to educational courses and uh, these DAG coins they will be put in escrow for eight months and you'll even get 5% extra coins per month because of doing that. Um, and I hope that I have explained to you why this cryptocurrency DAG coin will gain in value as to my knowledge. I mean, I don't have a crystal ball, of course, as to what the future will bring, but the intention, the honor, the integrity, the transparency of this particular company is large. They want to create um, from Estonia throughout the world, an ecosystem that functions and a cryptocurrency that's actually really going to be used uh, as a payment system. So this is the way that you can partake as an investor, as a passive member, you will get these coins, you will get them in your dashboard, you will get your account, you will be able to download a DAG wallet for current payments. So you can become a somewhat more passive investor and you can also choose to become a more active affiliate. And if you decide to promote this opportunity to uh, many people around you, then the company will compensate you for your success. Uh, if you're more active, then you can make some more money. If you're not that active, um, it stays with maybe a couple of euros a week. Now, those are the ways that you can get involved in DAGCoin and DAG University. Um, please get back to the person that has given you the link to these videos because he or she may well be able to, uh, to take the next steps with you. I hope I've given you information, information, knowledge, so you can base your decision on uh, information rather than gossip. 
and 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 frightful things so um yeah i wish you good luck in 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 making that decision and please be welcome feel welcome in this large worldwide team of people promoting this particular project uh, earning money as they go and building uh, an asset as uh, as we work through the next coming months of many 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 developments to come within the DAG coin DAG university and success factory network family so uh, thank you for watching this particular video uh, good luck on your choice get back to the person that has shown you this or just drop uh, your contact details uh, uh, by mail or by whatsapp to me and my team uh, we'll gladly help you in making a successful start in becoming a cryptocurrency investor and becoming a network affiliate within the success factory family okay thank you very much i'll close up i see that it's already 35 minutes so thank you for your time and uh, be able to uh, to help you will be a great honor for me in the weeks months and years to come thank you very much